Hello everybody, my name is Brad Jelberg. I am the founder and owner of Select Roses in Langley, BC. A business I founded in 1990 on a piece of land that my parents bought in 1974. You've been seeing a bunch of videos of me pruning roses and working around the house and talking a little bit about the beginnings, but I wanted to introduce you to the two people that started me because without them, there would be no me, there'd be no Select Roses and without them we wouldn't have the land to have built a farm on. We're going to talk with a little bit about a story first about a bench that was built for their 50th anniversary. This was uh, constructed for them by a good friend of theirs named William P.J. McCarthy. He had it commissioned by one of his gentlemen that uh, do work on his estate. So before that we'll just invite mom to come and have a seat here. And I'm gonna invite my dad to come in. So mama, you come and have your seat. Thank this you. This is my mom. Her name is Loretta Mae Albert, better known as Lori or mom. Yeah. And my father is Denny Jalbert. Everybody knows dad as dad or Denny. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how this bench came to life. My dad is known as keeping everything. And I mean, everything that started here in 1974 is still here, including me. So. Well, Dad, well, we'll let you explain what happened and how the bench came about. Well, just so happens that I had mm. this wheel that I'd been saving for a project. And um, speaking with Bill one day, he said, you know, I think uh, I can do something with that wheel for you. So I sent it home with them. And a little while later, up appeared this bench. So it's a wonderful bench. And uh, we thank Bill very much for his beautiful bench. That was for their 50th anniversary. So our great friend Bill, who does a lot of gardening and a lot helps us out a lot here, um, started out with a wheel, we end up with a bench, and mom and dad started out with me many years ago. There's also a few other siblings, there's three of us in the family, and we were living in a new uh, facility, uh, subdivision in what's called Cloverdale, BC. And I guess dad decided he didn't want to raise the family there, wanted to bring us out to the farm. Some friends of theirs had already moved out here. I think it was the uh, and Condrat. So dad knew some people, and I think the, the people who owned the land behind us Parker's. was a, a man that you'd worked with, right? Yes, Paul Parker. Okay, so did he approach you and say, hey, there's some acreage for sale, or how did it come about you guys decided? Because we were, I, would, I was sort of nine at the time, um, my brother was a year older and then everybody else was young. So how did you guys decide, well, we're going to go and live on seven acres? Uh, well, a funny story about that. We were out visiting Bob and Marilyn one day. Every Sunday we went home. out. Yeah, behind us here to the north. And uh, Bob says, uh, we said, you know, we really like the country here in this place. He said, yeah. Well, there's some property right behind us. It's gone so and gone oh. for sale. Why yeah. don't you come and have a look? So we marched out through the snow, it was snowing, had a look, and it was beautiful. Yeah. So of course, Mom being a city girl, you know, she, she, Mom was raised in Vancouver. Anyhow, uh, a little uh, later one day, Mom looks out our front window. We lived on a corner in a cul-de-sac. And there's probably 15 kids playing on our front lawn there, and she's looking out and says, I don't know any of them kids. You know that property out in Langley? Let's go have a second look at it. Oh, that's how it happened. Good. Yeah. And you know, I wasn't even consulted. <laughs> and I have a, a memory of coming out here for the first time, and it was cold, so it must have been in the fall or winter or something like that, because I vividly remember slipping and falling. It was snowing, too. It was snowing, and I would never live here. It was a mud hole, and I wasn't going to leave as a little kid. Um, since then, I've fell, fallen in love with the place. But it, we had an interesting beginning as everything was treed here, right, Dad? Yeah. Oh, yes. There was, they had to push a driveway in. There was no water here. So how did it come about that we got the original well in? Because there's a bit of a story behind the well. Well, first of all, you have to find, you need a well, but you have to yep. find out where the water is on the ground. So uh, Bob's father, as it happens out, he was a well witcher which is a person that finds water. A real witcher. Yes, yeah, he, he was. found it. I, he, I found he, had, the water. he had those sticks that yeah. went across. sticks, yes. And, and then we contact our west wells, yeah. and they dug yeah. the hole where he said, right and there, there came the water, 105 feet later. I remember he was a, was a nice senior gentleman. He was one of the original homesteaders in Langley. This is Grandpa Farquhar, we called him, and used these little sticks to find where our original well was. 
So we needed a house to live in out here. My mom and dad built, and it's way back behind the barn where you can't see it, under um, a little shack that we stayed in that had three bunk beds. Yes. And uh, how, how big do you think the building was? 20 by 12. 20 by 12. And the family, that's all of us, were out every weekend while they were building the house over there that's still standing. And um, dad was not a construction man. He was uh, in the automotive industry and learned how to build the house. I can tell you a little bit about that. I know he had some friends that came that, that helped out. Uh, you guys kinsman, picked out the plans. The kinsman. kinsman. Um, my, I remember my grandmother hand splitting, Grandma Jalbert, your mother hand splitting shakes yep. that went on on top of that, that house. And tell them about the first living arrangements. Did we have beautiful bedrooms for all four kids? <laughs> we had the basement, the cement was poured, yeah, we lived so on cement. we weren't living in a no. dirt so the floor. Top, we didn't even have bedrooms. No. no. But we had cement, which was very yeah. nice back then. And what were the what we had? Was it curtains that divided the rooms? One Boys? curtain. One curtain. All the it was yeah. like a dorm. Oh. One, two, yeah, three, four. Yeah, that's what four. I remember. Yeah. And you know, as kids, we, we didn't think this was bad. We thought it was fun. It was all fun to us. So, uh, we didn't know any, any 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 better. We had a functioning toilet upstairs, I think. Oh, that yeah. Had, that, that had a curtain on it too. You didn't, there was no door that you could lock. There was just a curtain And on one it. sink. And one sink. And a bathtub. Four kids, we have one a sink yes, and, a ba yes. and a bathtub. We have the bathtub. I'm insisting. We're not moving in without a toilet and a bathtub. That's probably a good thing. Yes. So ma mama got so we had a toilet and a bathtub. Toilet and a bathtub, running water. And a and curtain. electricity. And a curtain. We had running water and electricity. Yes. Okay. And then you were working as a, a partsman. I was working for a uh, Mom's full-time job was looking after four kids. And we were easy kids, weren't we? Oh, Very. yeah. You were just angels. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was the best one, probably. Mm. Would you? Mm. Well, anyway, so dad went to work, as it was back in the day every single day and then he came home and we had other work to do he was still building the house finishing it himself so you were pretty much non-stop right dad for the first how many years did it take to finish this house do you think oh, well, probably two or three two or three and, years uh, some of it didn't get finished for quite a long years after that oh yeah, yeah. and when the drywall went up yes i well, remember guess who was sanding it you were drywall i was sanding oh. so he could come home and paint Oh, after a full day's work. Yeah. And were we helping? What were we doing, being kids? No, you were we, at school we when I was school. sanding. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So mom kept busy in the day. Um, there was no house cleaner. Mom, mom had no nanny, no. Uh, nobody extra. It was just mom looking after everybody. Vegetable garden probably went in right after. away because we always had had the garden. Yeah. Now, our, all of our, our my grandparents, their parents were still alive at the time. They they would come out and visit, yeah. I remember. And uh, my gardening bug started. My brother loved gardening right away with at my grandmother Russell's. And um, she had, I remember, a piece and a Mr. Lincoln, very famous roses in her garden, always did the vegetable gardening and the canning. and. Mom did that here. We had a big veggie garden, I remember. And the property has changed a lot since the beginning. So we, Dad got us involved, I guess, with our other uh, friends. They were in 4-H, which uh, the 4-H's stands for head, heart, health, and hands. Learn to do by doing. So it's like a young farmer's type of group. Amazing and, you remembered that. Yeah, amazing yeah. you remembered that. I, well, this is what we learned. and. Um, the person who's actually videotaping this, my good friend Nancy, who you will be meeting at one time, we met through 4-H. That's a whole other interview in itself, so we're going to talk about that one later. So how, and it was Bob Farquhar, the, the Farquhar family still owns, Bob has passed away, his, his wife is still alive and his, his kids, and his one son is still living on the property behind us, so we're still connected. We still have the same neighbors to our right, and we've only the ones to our, or sorry, to our left, the ones to our right, have only changed one time. We've had the same neighbors. He's also our dentist and a wonderful family that, that lives around here. So we started doing um, farming just, it was 4-H, right? We got yeah, this into. was the corral. This was the corral. That but was where the we corral. Sell roses now. Where was the, the first barn that you kept the cows in? Right here, there was where, where the floor bundle section is. And oh, then the okay. chicken coop. Oh, no, okay. excuse me. 
the, it was right here. The barn was, was here in the middle of the driveway. Yeah. Here. Okay. Yes. And and Nancy, you can take a shot of that the, was the that was a chick. We had chickens with a wired cage, and so this here, people, was our chicken coop. I'm going to cross and jump in front of the camera. So this was the chicken coop. Uh, we we raised our own eggs and we had our own own chickens and all that kind of stuff, and they would run around in a in a, a little chicken pen out front. And then after we did the thing with the chickens, it became um, a dog house. We had Nori, the Newfoundland, we changed it to a dog house. And then later on, it was cleaned out and it became the pump house and another junk house for dad. Dad always needed another house to put, to put his junk in. So we want to talk a little bit about our 4-H and our gardening years at the beginning. So the, 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 the place developed over, over the years. I always loved gardening. Uh, Mum and Dad did what I call the typical landscaping. They planted some junipers, went to Clay's Nursery. Uh, still good friends of ours where I apprenticed that were just up the road. We had some rhododendrons from Clay's Nursery. Yeah, but don't forget when right. we first moved here, I planted a rose, my yeah. first rose, yeah. in the roundabout. Yeah, yeah, we had and big cedar trees. And my mom didn't read the box, I guess, so she planted it in the shade at the base of cedar trees, but it bloomed. And mom always says, I got a perfect rose every year off of that. And that was Miss All American Beauty, and that rose lived till this year. And it's Dad, still over there, isn't it? No, we actually dug it out, mom. Sorry. Why? Well, we uh, were renovating the bed. We're doing something new. And it was not doing too well. It wasn't doing too well. Yeah. So, that <laughs> was, was it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Are was you it? sure? Yeah, we, yeah, I'm sure. We had, had to go, mama. Yeah, so uh, we did that on Mum's 80th birthday. So the original rose is no longer on the property. Dad used his tractor. We're renovating that bed. So that rose is gone. But there's other roses that have been here. Queen Elizabeth has been here a long time. And I, my, um, the gardening bug for me, I think, really started in high school because it was in the 80s. I have a book you guys gave me for Christmas. I remember it says, uh, Merry Christmas, Brad, I think 1981. So. I would have been in grade 10, something along that lines, and um, I lo loved dogs and everything else at the time. And um, our other siblings were involved in a variety of sports and singing. Yeah. Um, Randy, Randy band. liked gardening, band, band, and all that kind of stuff. But but um, the, the the gardening thing was was my baby. And I started when we really started getting into it as a hobby, planting rose bushes, and I would force Dad to dig out his prized junipers. He loved these big things called junipers. And do you remember oh, yeah. that when we first did and how big they were, where the cars were? And we had to, what did we do to get them out? To Put dig them out? Put a chain around them. And, and the, the, tra truck the tractor pulled them out. The tractor wouldn't. It was, I think, the, the bus. Uh, may have used a school bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. His, um, with dad, yeah, his dad was with driving school bus and also farming as well, ra raising raising cows. So we had what? How many animals? We had at the time we had dogs, we had cats, we had Hereford ducks. cattle, we had ducks, we had chickens, and sheep. Sheep, as uh, my one Joy sister Joy got in me yeah. into sheep, and um, I remember the. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there was hardly. We've just never had horses, but we've tried everything else. And then llamas came later. Llamas we came had llamas later. too. So we should have been named McDonald. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had a McDonald's. Farm. We had a little bit of everything, and we we liked it all. And some ducks were born in the house. Do you remember the name of the one? Was Chi Chi. Chi Chi. Yeah. We had. Why did you name it Chi Chi? Because it would Chi Chi Chi. <laughs> Follow me all over it the followed place. Followed mom everywhere, and we we would take that. We just took the eggs from the ducks, and we hatched them in the canner. I think with the light on him in our bedroom, and Mum taught it to swim. And you had a little pond or a kitty dish or something. No, it swam my... until it went outside. What did you have it in? My dish pan. Your dish pan. So Mum kept a, a, a duck in the house in her dish pan. In this her... was very normal for my my upbringing. A little bit different than Nancy's. So we'll talk about that later. And um, so the let's talk about the the business year. So we were we graduated from school. We all made it and. I went to work, my brother at a restaurant, did that, and then I was working at a restaurant called Catalan's Cafe, and uh, I remember looking at it thinking, I just I can't do this for a living, flipping hamburgers. This is not a good way to make a living for me. You were and the manager up I there. was the manager yeah. of this truck stop cafe, and I still didn't like it, yeah. um, and I had to get up so early in the morning, 
And so I saw, I was gardening as, as a hobby. I already belonged to the Rose Society at the time. And I saw uh, be, be a horticulturist. So I decided to go back and study horticulture, at, which is now Fraser Valley uh, Un University, which I'm proud to say I am, was selected as one of their top 40 alumni of all time. That was just a few years ago. You were in um, their first class. I was in their first horticultural class. class they ever had. For one um, year. It, what, it was a one-year program. Yeah. yeah. One year, and I had a certificate. And that was the yeah. highest level of education anybody in our family had ever had, had achieved, was the one-year certificate. Everybody went to grade 12, and then we had Dad give us the boot. We had to go to work. After oh, that. Bob, there's one coming up that's going to be. Yes, yeah. Well, somebody's going to be this coming up. Yeah. Yep. We're ignoring the phone. We're not going to pretend it's in there. So we're not like Letterman. We don't have a whole bunch of people to beep and uh, flush and do all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the the business, I, I wrote, we got a tiny little greenhouse. From I was, Condrat. From our, our friends, friends in Condrat. How, how big do you think that little thing was? Yes. I think it's uh, probably six foot by eight. Six foot by eight foot, people, is how I started my career. And... For any of you that aren't going to make it to the end of this video, that have a dream, I want to tell you, I started in a six foot by eight foot greenhouse, and my roses now sell on four continents, the roses that we've hybridized. That little greenhouse that we started with little mini roses from cuttings, yep. and um, we'd sell them just on the weekend, because I was working at other, other jobs. You had to work I had to work at, after I graduated from college, I worked at Clay's Nursery down the road, and we'd sell out this tiny greenhouse. And you were open on the weekends only? Open on weekends and only. And somebody from Vancouver came up during the week, Yeah. and I wasn't going to let them go home. Oh, so, so are, I sold my she, first, honey, oh, your first, my rose. first miniature. Oh, oh and good. I phoned over and told you. Yeah, yeah, because we made a sale. It was probably yeah. how much were they? About three dollars. Three dollars. Three, three dollars. So I made yeah. three dollars while I was working. I was making a double income at the time. Uh, that little greenhouse we used for several years. Then we gave to the neighbors who yeah. used it. Next. Millie next door, yeah. and used it for years and years and years. We're not sure if it's still there. We're going to take a look, and find, if it is, yeah. we're going to find it and take a photo of it for you. After that, uh, it was just miniature roses at the beginning, and we decided Dad and I wanted to go a little bit bigger, so we built another greenhouse. It was a thousand square feet, and uh, everything on this farm, by the way, and I mean everything, was built by Dad. So I would just point to the, because I don't know how to build anything. I, if I try and put a nail in it, bends. Uh, I can do roses, I can't do any, anything else mechanical. So we hired, we went, we found a good local guy, Brian Steele, I remember, sold us the project. It was like a do-it-yourself for kit, was it? Here's your your greenhouse, number one. It was greenhouse number one, yeah. Number but one. It, we bought it as a do-it-yourself yeah. yeah. kit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. All in piece. Just had it constructed. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then we had to put it together. So we did, the, again, the learn to do by doing. And I have a photograph that hopefully we'll scan and show you later when uh, at the end of the summer, the first greenhouse that we, uh, my brother was helping me fill pots, take cuttings. I was still working in another nursery. And in those early years, my only thought was to sell miniature roses. And we um, uh, sold quite a few on the weekends and I would go off in my pickup truck. I went to Granville Island Market, to Van Dusen Gardens, places like this, that we could pawn off our little mini roses. The Rose Society would buy some from us. I was really involved in the Rose Society, and I loved creating hybridizing. So the year was 1990, was the very first year of the business, selling the little roses, and I started hybridizing right from day one. And loved, loved that part of it. At the beginning, I didn't dream that my roses would make it to the world market anywhere. Really? I just thought we'd be selling them here. But no, I was hybridizing from the beginning, 1990. I remember opened. the first year you brought in the hybrid teas. Yes, and, so, yeah. and there was 75 of them. Yes. And I told you, you. you're never going to sell them. Yeah. 75? Yeah, yeah. I bought. <laughs> so <gasps> there was a local grower, and we bought in the big roses that we now are well known for and 75 and mom thought i was going to go bankrupt i was going to lose oh. my shirt 75. and this year how many did we sell on opening day we sold on opening day close to 700 rose bushes this year and on um, one day on one, one on one day, day never did that uh, still on this small piece of property 
down a one one lane road 38th avenue we're in the same location and we will now on a very popular variety the first year bring in a um um 100 or 200 plants of something that's quite popular if it's our, our new anniversary rose um we still do 100 or 150 plants a year so it was 75 rose bushes in total and i was ecstatic because i made a few dollars on each one of those and every penny I made at the time went back into the garden to buy plants. I was a plant fanatic, not just roses. I, I loved all kinds of plants. And uh, my money always went back into expand. And I was always telling dad to cut trees down. Not because I don't like trees, but roses need sunshine. And um, since then, the, the trees have continued to grow. And the business has continued to grow quite a bit too. Yeah. Yeah. So dad, the first years, well, we went to, I was working back and forth. You were open on the weekends. And then I think by year three, I decided I wanted to make a go of it. So I, yeah. I would cut what was happening. I was working at Clay's Nursery and I would go four days there, three days here. And then the next year I would tell that nursery, okay, I can work for you three days because I'm going to do four days running my own business. Finally, I made the jump at the end and did this full time. So I've always worked basically seven days a week, but it was divided between jobs. But then it became this job. Dad was working your full time job. Um, and mom was helping me from the very beginning. Yeah. And I paid it well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget the mail order part. The mail, oh, oh, I, yeah, oh, we did, yeah, so we did yeah. with our minis, we did a mail order business. So mom would wrap, we would, people would, we printed up a little catalog. Yeah. And um, sent it off in the mail, because there, there was no internet to do it like that. And, yeah. the, and the, they would send us an order with a check. And uh, we were so excited when the order would come in, there would be a check, you know, for $30, $40, $50 for the mini roses. Yep. And we would pack them up in the spring in the greenhouse in little boxes. I, you'd wrap, I did all um, the um, wrapping. Yep, went in a little plastic bag and you would tie. The no, little, I wrapped them in newspaper, yeah. put them in a box. Yeah. And then Canpar, we would deal with the yeah. courier would well, come and first, pick them up. I took them yeah. down to the post office. At first. Oh, at first, yeah. yeah. Porter's, yeah. Porter's yeah. General Store. Porter's, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, and that was a store that had been here since the early 1900s. Yeah. Yeah, but then we got big enough, we could do a call a courier to come in. And big enough means uh, five, six, or seven boxes would go out sometimes. I think yeah. sometimes even more um, that we would ship out at that time. Uh, but then what happened, it got to the point we, we cut out mail order, um, what was, was not profitable at all, we still liked it, but we were getting so busy retail, they were finding us from everywhere. And yeah. we would, uh, I would write for garden magazines, do all of that kind of stuff, um, and these people were just finding us, and more and more oh, people were yeah. coming all the time. But it was always spring, we were open spring till July, and then when, what year did you retire, Dad? 2000. 2001. 2001. So dad retired to basically, you know, holiday, travel the world, do all of that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so since then, dad's built me two, two more greenhouses, another little building. The original shed, by the way, has just been that we lived in. It still has the bunk beds and it's filled. What's it filled with, dad? Junk. That's junk. Oh. Your okay. possessions. Prize possessions. Good Pri junk. Good junk. Prize possessions are, are in that shed. And Dad built another shed. Nancy, can we get this in the picture? You'll see Dad's new one. That's his best build. Over through the rose bushes, you'll see it. That was uh, how many years ago, Dad? Three? 2014. 2014, he built that. How old were you when you built that? Well, over 65. Over 65. You're <laughs> well into your 70s. Do you have any formal training in engineering or anything like that? Any formal training at all? <laughs> Learn to do by doing. Learn to do by Learn doing. Learn to do so by doing. Dad would sketch it out, and I can tell you that builders, people in the business, have looked at this building and said, this is really well built. They have looked at the other buildings that my dad has looked at and said, this is really well built. And uh, Dad does his basic the electrical work. Nobody's shocked ourselves yet. Um, We've um, the, the basic plumbing dad does. Of course, we have things inspected properly, like everybody would on a yeah, farm. Yeah, but there's no plumbing there. There's no, <laughs> and there's no plumbing over no, there. No, there's no plumbing over there. Only in <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I but, wish there were lights on over there. Well, we'll, we'll get we'll get over there one day. Mom. One I day. think we'll do that. So there, I've traveled a little bit. I've been to England and Ireland. I had the privilege of judging at the Hague Rose Trials a few years back. And now my roses are being picked up by other large 
uh, growers. So what happens uh, with our breeding program is companies like, for instance, Vogue last year, Vogue magazine, uh, chose our rose to be their 125th anniversary rose. We work with some other groups um, all over the world and we have an agent um, that takes care of our roses there. And um, we have a wonderful relationship with um, a new local grower that will, will hopefully be launching some of our roses. The rose market is very different in different parts of the world. So when we're selecting our seedlings, we're trying to select uh, for what that market might want. If it's more of a shrub type rose or maybe they like the English rose market. So I'm always sending budwood of my product out to all of the different markets. We still maintain the business here. Uh, from what I know, we retail more roses than anybody in Canada from here in Langley. Uh, compared to any independent garden center. Our numbers are still more than anybody. And I was told at the time when the large wholesaler, the biggest in the world, was from the US Jackson and Perkins, told us I was their single largest rose customer in all of Canada. So some of you might be thinking, well, why are you, are you bringing these rose bushes in? You don't grow them all. We love the breeding work, the testing work, but there's so many good roses developed by many different people in the world that the best way that we can do this to bring you the best quality of plants is to buy them from all these different people. Yeah. And then in the spring, we start working hard, don't yep. we? And it's about February that we start up. Snow too. It's snow snow too. And we're rain, and mom snow, cold. and mom mom, you turned 80 this year. Everybody yeah. knows because we celebrate it. Yeah. And mom is still out there every day with us in the snow. Mom broke her ankle the one year and had her booty out there. Uh, working potting rose bushes. Did I? It's, yes, you had your booty. What did I do? You sprained, you, you sprained your ankle. Yeah, yeah you fell down up. the stairs. It was wrapped up yeah. in one of those, those inflation yeah. boots. Yeah. My parents are very hardworking people, which I appreciate. And um, uh, just to end the whole thing, we one thing we like to say, we really love it, don't we? Oh. You like doing it. Yeah. The yeah. people are great that come out from all over the place. We, we've heard stories from people visiting from England that, that come yeah. out to visit us. And now they're going to be able to buy some of our roses in these different places. That's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, we also became the first Canadian uh, uh, hybridizers to ever win an international trial ground award. So a variety of mine was entered in Barcelona, Spain. We won two fragrance awards there. That same variety went to New Zealand. We are the grower we work with there, Amora Roses introduced it, and that won a fragrance award in that country as well. We'll be continuing to develop that part of the business. We continue to welcome everybody here to the nursery, of course. The main purpose, though, of this video was to introduce the two people that made it all happen, because if I wasn't here, if they didn't you have the vision to buy the farm, well, and if I didn't have them helping, it wouldn't happen. Yep. So, Mama Jalbert, who's not going to retire, she's no. going to stay working. Yeah, no, yep. Mom's not going to retire. Dad's not going to retire. He just helps. And um, how much have I increased your pay this year? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad work on a on a, a, sli a sliding pay scale. So we uh, uh, volunteer I, I, work. It's called volunteer. It's, it's volunteer. yeah, yeah. They're world class volunteers. My parents have been from day one. Um, but sometimes I give them money to go out for dinner, don't I? Yes, you go yeah. down to the airport yeah. restaurant or yeah. um, sometimes fish and chips. Fish and chips. You've had McDonald's. Oh, or lots a, of times. A and W from from. <laughs> they, there, there's our sweet kitty. Yeah, you know, it keeps it, it keeps us all young. It, I feel. I, I I think it does, and um, it's it's been fun. A lot of people said, "How can you? Is it make you crazy working with your parents?" I said. Oh yes, it does. Imagine how it drives them crazy because I'm not the easiest person to get along with. But generally, we get along fine. There has not been very, nobody's hit each other. No. Nobody's ever had huge yelling matches, little no. yelling matches sometimes. And uh, usually <laughs> it's about dumb stuff, but there's never been any big yelling matches. No. Um, no. So we get along well. Our customers generally get along well. We've only had a couple yelling matches with customers here. It's been a great business to be in. We've loved it. Next year will be 29 years in the rose business. We're planning our big 30th that's coming up. We'll try and do a really big uh, special new rose for that. And uh, we'll tell you more about that in the future. Thank you everybody for listening to Brad Jalbert from Select Roses. My mother, Lori Jalbert and Denny Jalbert. You'll see us here six and days and a week. come say hi to us. Yes, Other than Monday, means. we were open seven days a week until this year. Yes. Mama says we need a day off. 
and yeah, uh, we go shopping and we do it finally. So we're only open six days a week now. Thank you so much. We love having everybody come out and see us.